attention is building all around you can feel it in the air it's more than a feeling a new reality everywhere i look and see the signs of the times yeah it's coming but they're all in the now everything you know it's all about the change see the sky cracking it rains down flames oh man they ain't ready for it this is something that they can't ignore coming down like a meteor this is more than a game you better get ready shock the world Shock the world. This is more than a game. You better get ready. Go ahead, get ready. Shock the world. Shock the world. It's building all around you can feel it in the air it's more than a feeling a new reality everywhere i look and see the signs of the times yeah it's coming but they're all in the now everything you know it's all about the change see the sky cracking it rains down flames oh man they ain't ready for it this is something that they can't ignore coming down like a meteor this is more than a game you better get ready shock the world Shock the world. This is more than a game. You better get ready. Go ahead, get ready. Shock the world. Shock the world. Shock the world! 
On top of the morning, on top of the wave, on top of the team, on top of the days, on top of my purpose. I do, I create. Y'all wanna copy, but we're not the same. Sometimes when it can be dark, sometimes when it can be scary, sometimes you still gotta push on and just do what is necessary. You need that mindset, dog. You're just like a mercenary. You just gotta go push on. You just gotta go, go and get it. You gotta go, we so fly. People around, they ask you why. Yeah, what is the reason you do it? Yeah, what is the reason you even try? It is cause I need me a purpose. I need a decent life. Yeah, I don't wanna be so basic. I just wanna go, go and fight. I really wanna give it all. I really wanna go all in. Yeah, I'm really gonna be that guy at the top that's not gonna be falling. So I'm just gonna be that leader. Man, I will be shot calling. So I'm back with a pack of my wolves. But you won't hear us hauling. On top of the morning. On top of the way. On top of the team. On top of the days. On top of my purpose. I do, I create. Y'all wanna copy. But we're not the same. Yeah, yeah. Life is a game and I play to the fullest. I would be a fuller than I know if I wouldn't. So I just gotta go do it and do it. I just gotta keep on, keep on, keep on pushing. Man, they wanna really tell me, hey, please stop it, do not do it. But I will grab the fucking pencil, I will make it, man, I gotta pursue it. Stop with the dreams. That's what they said while well, I'm back on my team. I did not follow that advice, man, it's not what it seems. Life is just like a dream. So I just stay pristine. Man, I come more crystal clear, man, I just fall. You're about to see. Yeah. Man, they able to see that life is just like magic. They think it's basic, black and white, but y'all don't seem to get it. There's levels to this game, levels that y'all can't imagine. So y'all gotta be on top, or I'ma just go pursue that. On top action. of the morning, on top of the way, on top of the team, on top of the days, on top of my purpose. I do, I create. Y'all wanna copy, but we're not the same. On top of the morning, on top of the way. On top of the team, on top of the days, on top of my purpose, I do, I create. Y'all wanna copy, but we're not the same. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What is the Campo logo? On top of the Campo logo that? I've on top of the wave, on top of the team, on top of the days, on top of my purpose, I do, I create. All right, here we go. Playing games begin. The playoffs start here on Sunday afternoon at the Ice Den. Campo Verde, the 12th seed coming in against the 5 seed Pinnacle. As we bring in here, Dylan Pescatore, James Mackey, as always. But special thanks to our man, Ben Smith, for setting everything up. James is an interesting one. These two teams, you think of a 5 and a 12, and you don't think of a really good game in both teams that are equal in talent, but they played just two weeks ago and it was a 1-1 tie. Big reason, goaltending for both teams. Yeah, we've seen a lot of Austin Shardle this year. This we've talked about since, I think, yesterday. This is the first time we've seen Campo. But well, you mentioned Campo's got some really solid goaltending, so if their offense and defense can produce both the same, let goaltending win the game for you if it has to. Ultimately, Pinnacle's done really good with that. Ben Thomas is a great goaltender. Austin Shardle's a great goaltender. And again, their offense and defense we know can move up and down the ice with extreme ease, really. Dominic Selegman, the goaltender for Campo, came over from Schaap from last year. He's been outstanding this year. Can steal a game in his own right, looking to do so right here. With Campo's offense struggling at, at times, he's really been the rock for them. But for Pinnacle, their top line is really where it starts. Alex Illing, Sam Minthorn, and Cal Butler. What can you say about those three? It's one of those things that we've talked about all season again, right? Speed, speed wins games. It's a 200-foot game both ways. You've got to be able to play defense. You've got to be able to play offense, and they transition really well, whether it's offensive or defensive zone time, whether it's neutral zone time between the red line and blue line in their own defensive or offensive zones. Pinnacle's really fast at the transition game, and their forward lines, not only their top forward lines, but all of their forward lines are really good at that. It's something they make sure to work on quite often, and it does show in these games. Pinnacle, the five seed, this is not a usual season for them. We're usually seeing them get a bye in the first round, at least one, maybe the two seed. This is a weird season. They haven't had the scoring that they wish. The defense has been up and down as well. For Campo, this might be the most equal 5-12 matchup you're going to get. They like to keep scores low. They're, if they're going to win this game, it's going to be a 3-2-2-1 final. Yeah, again, it's one of those things where this is, you know, 5 versus 12 when you look at, like, a March Madness bracket, let's say. That's the matchup you most likely expect an upset in. And this is an opportunity for us to see that, not saying that, you know, Campo Verde is substantially worse than Pinnacle just because they're a 12, but this is one of those times when an upset can really happen, and it could be really fun to watch how it affects the games on Tuesdays. 
You have this game to start. Second game coming up right after this, we'll have it one more time, is Brophy and Horizon. That's the 6-11 and 11 matchup. Already a game completed today. That was Flagstaff and Hamilton. Flagstaff won 5-2 as the 7 seed. They move on to Mullet on Tuesday. Probably the happiest they've ever been to take that ride up the, one, uh, the I-17. Yeah, kind of one of those things where you're, you know, it's, it, you got to count the small victories, right? The games where you can win into the big moments are important, and that's, that's what they did on that is they won into a big moment. They won into the next round. Make sure to buy your tickets as well for the Asha Championship game. That's Sunday, February 4th over at Mullet Arena. Pinnacle and Campo right about to get started. Pinnacle in the white, Campo in their dark green, and really a battle of probably top five goaltenders in Asha. You mentioned Austin Chardle, Matthew Gahan, Dominic Selegman for Campo, Max Milstein, we'll see him later for Brophy, and so many others. This is a game where if Campo's going to win it, it's going to be low scoring. We bring on Matthew right here. Matthew, how is it to make you one of your broadcasting debut? And number two, you have to commentate a pretty good game. Yeah, it's a pretty good game. Um, excited to see how these two face off, so good to be here. You have two great goaltending, and speaking from a goaltender yourself, Austin Shardle for Pinnacle led the league in, in goals against this year against Dominic Selegman. You remember seeing him at Chaparral last yeah. year. These two goaltenders, I mean, you can expect a 1-0, 2-1 game yeah, tonight. Yeah, I'm going to be surprised it's a very low-scoring game today. Both goaltenders are pretty solid. Should be a really good one. Shardle and Pinnacle on your right in the white. Austin's this year, his stats are really good. 6-2-2 two two on the air with a 9-18 save percentage and a 1-9-0 goals against. Had a shutout this season on opening night against Mountain Ridge. For Campo, it's the sophomore, Dominic Selegman. Last year, we mentioned it, he spent over at Chaparral, transferred over to Campo, now 1-8-1 this year with an 8-9-2 save percentage, a 3-6-6 goals against. But the stats don't tell the whole story with him. Yeah, no, no, no. Stats don't tell a lot of, a lot of times stats don't tell a story for a goaltender. A lot of times it's who's in front, so. We've done 20 regular season games. We're ready for the play-in games. One of these team season ends tonight after these three periods. 15 minutes as usual, and it's actually senior night for Pinnacle, so let's make sure to mention their seniors. It all starts with their goaltender, Austin Chardle, Damian Costadina, Sam Minthorn, Cal Butler, Dylan Weissman, Alex Kahn, Luke Parker, and Ben Thomas, the eight seniors for Pinnacle. For Campo, also a couple seniors for them. Six at that, Anderson, Heinrichs, Jewett, Rydell, Mulpey, and Caputo. Ryan, that is, the senior uh, forward for Campo. So, Matt, you've seen Campo a few times this year. What's your scouting report on the Coyotes? Uh, they're kind of a sleeper, if I'm honest with you. I wouldn't count them out at all at this game. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of them. I believe I was out of, I might have been out of town for one of the games that they played. But um, they're solid, again, back to their goaltender. It's, they're pretty solid. If he's locked down, I think the team should be pretty set. 2-16 and 2 is the record for Campo this year for Pinnacle. A weird record. You don't usually see them in the play-in around 11-7 and 2. And you think maybe there's a down year for Pinnacle, but last year was the 5 seed Dev yeah. Vista going the whole way. So even though you have the top four seeds, there still is those 5, 6, 7 seeds that can create some noise. Yeah, it's anyone's tournament here. It's just... Whoever's most bonded, if you know what you're doing at the right time, you should be fine. We have four referees ready for the play-in game. Pinnacle in the white, Campo in their greens with the Coyote across their chest. The Legman in net for Campo. It'll be Austin Shardle for Pinnacle. Ben Thomas got the game last night. So Ligman played last night, so he'll go back to back after a 4-1 loss to Basha last night for Campo. But wipe that all away. A 20-game regular season is gone, and now it's just do or die here at the Ice Den on Sunday. One team is moving on to Mullet, the other team is heading home. Puck's down, we're ready to go, and Campo pushes on the draw. It's their all-star nominee in Hayden Heinrichs. Their represent will move the puck around to Luke Parker, who will hold it for Pinnacle. A Pinnacle team, we mentioned a little bit of an unusual year. The offense hasn't been there for them all the time. Luke Parker gets taken down in the process by Nolan Jewett. Campo looking to move it out, and they do with Caputo to center ice, he's knocked off the puck. Parker and Fox came together as Heinrichs takes it in the corner. Centering pass, looking for Caputo in front. It went back to the blue line and the shot goes wide after a deflection on the glove side of Shardle. Campo keeps possession. If the stats tell the whole story, it will be a low scoring game. Both these teams, which struggles putting the puck in the back of the net, but defense has been the name of their game. And there it is once more. Dom Seligman scoops it up after the shot by Luke Parker. Matt Seligman, only a sophomore, a really young kid, and not the tallest of kids, no, but 
he really covers the whole net yeah, very well. He covers the net really well, especially for his size. You wouldn't, you know, if you look at him, you wouldn't be able to think he's a goalie, but he's a really solid goalie. Only a sophomore playing in another playoff game. He played last year in the quarterfinal game for Schapp. They played against DV and lost that game 4-1. to one. DV on their way to the championship. Campo takes a big hit. That was Brown getting hit by Butler in center ice. This is the top line for Pinnacle, Illing, Minthorn, and Butler. Cross ice pass picked off by Brown. Here comes Williams who shoots the blocker side. It went wide of Shartle. From the blue it comes in and wide of the net. Kept in by the Coyotes. Gavin Williams for Pinnacle. Goes to Minthorn who goes off the wall. Illing will pick it up for Pinnacle over the line. Alex Illing to the backhand try. He scores! <laughs> Illing just 90 seconds into the first period and Pinnacle strikes first. the speed of that top line and he's one of the fastest players in the league. 100%. That's how he, he picked it up at center ice and went the entire way. Yes sir. Illing gets the goal on the backhand try through the legs of Seligman. Just 90 seconds in, a pinnacle team that's starting to get their offense going. Coach Chris Illing says this is probably the best hockey we've played all year. They had a 5-4 win last night against Horizon. And a close one, it was 4-4 to the end about four minutes ago when it was Alex Illing with the game-winning goal. Cooper O'Mahony taken off his stick. Kept in by Hammond and Iacono, they'll whip it in. Lynch will go back for Campo along with O'Mahony who's played defense for about 90% of this year for Pinnacle, but now at the end of the year looking to move him to forward and get some offense going. Campo's looking to do the same thing. Lynch over the line for Campo. Has Schleiding his shot, blocker saved by Shardle. He covers his post on Campo's biggest opportunity so far. The winner will head to Mullet either Tuesday or Wednesday for the quarterfinals. The other, the season ends tonight. Aiden Lynch makes a few nice moves. Makes his way over the line and puts it into the blocker of Shardle. Goes for a change. Stepping up is Cerneca. He kicks it forward with his skate past Vegas. It pops out to Alex Kahn. He will knock it out of the zone. Campo controls and comes the other way. Easton Stockford right off the bench will pick it up and give it over to Ian Schmall. The only call up for Pinnacle, but now with O'Mahony moving to forward, we get some depth back on D. Campo with a good breakout. They'll start it the other way. Shackert couldn't move it past Schmall. Khan knocked it forward and right back in his own zone is Jewett. Knocks it over to Kraft. Khan on the forecheck for Pinnacle. A big body at that. Takes a lot of space up. Stockford backhands it in. Charlie Fox makes a nice move at the goal line. Centering pass right back to the blue. Schmall will hold. His shot got blocked down and to the side of the net. Fox gets it past two Coyotes. Pinnacle with their longest offensive zone shift. It goes under the stick of Schmall and he'll have to chase. A big opportunity for Ian Schmall, but also a, a game where you know if you make one mistake, it really could cost you your season. Yes, sir. Four minutes into the first period, 1-0, Pinnacle on the goal by Alex Illing. Fox takes a spill, gets back up, still had control. Luke Parker will hold the goal and back in front and a big save by Seligman. It was Chatsworth on the centering pass, but he didn't get all of it, and Seligman centered it up nicely. You see Pinnacle's really starting to work their four-check game. Yeah. That was a long offensive zone shift. Yeah. For Campo, it's all about getting the puck out when you can and not getting wet, yeah, hold, hold tired down, right? Side, yes, sir. Butler will take the draw, looking to get it to Illing, who lays a big hit along the half wall. It comes out to the slot, taken away by the Coyotes, and Campo will come the other way. Williams, now Watterson. And Watterson has been really good against Pinnacle this year. Two games between these two teams. Pinnacle took the first one, and then Campo tied the second 1-1 just a couple weeks back, right before the new year. And a great effort by both netminders who are playing today, and Shartle and Seligman. 
Watterson gets on the loose puck. Derry Berry knocks him off of it. Gets it to Illing at the half wall. He turned it over to Williams. And it comes to Derry Berry, who will go off the wall and out looking for Minthorn. And he got a tip on it, so icing waved off. Anderson, the senior, couldn't get it out. Shot by Iacono, was blocked down by a stick. And then Seligman got the rest of it. Lynch picks it up for Campo Verde. Looking to move the puck out of the zone. Taken away. Iacono to O'Mahony, who shoots save. Rebound still in front. And Seligman from the seat of his pants. Oh, three saves by the sophomore. You talk about top-tier goaltending. Yeah, he did a great job of controlling that rebound to an extent. And really covering his right side post there. It was O'Mahony at the start, and then Iacono got in there as well. Along with George Hammond. Keeps it 1-0 as where we stand. Ewart back for Campo. We'll get it for Anderson. And Campo breaks it out. Costadina back on D for Pinnacle along with O'Mahony. And Ethan Glance. Glance takes it away in a danger aerial. Take it behind his own net. He got it up to Costadina. Taken away by the Cody. He's now the loose puck picked up by Iacono. Cole Iacono with a hat trick on opening night back in October, which doesn't feel too long ago. No, it doesn't. This season has really flown by. Season, the season has felt really short. In, or in the best way, of course. Yeah. 20 game regular season. You have the play ins today. Two in Chandler. We already mentioned Flagstaff took down Hamilton 5 to 2. Earlier today, Basha is taking on Shap right now over in Chandler. And this game, and then Brophy and Horizon, as this will be an icing in the second game. Are you surprised with Flagstaff taking down Hamilton? I just heard about that actually. I got a text for it, got here. It's a little surprised. Hamilton's a really solid team, but I mean, I guess you can't sleep on Flagstaff. We played them once in, or twice in the regular season. They're pretty solid, pretty solid. They always are, and I mentioned it to James, probably their happiest they've ever been to go up the I-17 for two hours, right? <laughs> yes, sir. And they'll have to come back down for a mullet on Tuesday or Wednesday that'll, now. That'll, I bet you they're gonna be excited for that. We'll see who they play, depending on who wins the play-in games and choosing their time slots. Smith puts it around the glass. It did hit the netting, which draws the whistle with 8.31 to go in the first period. When you're playing such a good goalie for both sides, Seligman for Campo, Shardle for Pinnacle, when you're the opposition team, how, how much of a, almost like a deep breath can you take after you score the first goal? As a goalie, you, you gotta get locked back in. Once you get scored, you gotta, you gotta refocus, lock back in. You can't take much off, you can't. Because you know your team needs you. This one won't go down for icing. As Jewett's back for Campo. He gets it along the boards, and Stockford will have to chase this one. Right before the red line, keeps play moving to Schmall. Shortle's last game was against DV in a 1-1 tie, and one of his most impressive performances this year, that was back on January 6th, a 1-1 tie against a very good Desert Vista team and a lot of offensive talent on that roster. Derry Berry keeps it at the blue, takes a hit, and gives it reverse in the process. Fox looking to pick up the loose puck from Caputo. Jewett comes back for Campo, turns it over. Parker's shot into the glove of Seligman. You mentioned maybe an underwhelming regular season for Pinnacle, but they have all the tools to really be they a really do. good team. Their first line is really solid. I think if they get them, get some action, they'll be pretty set. The second and third lines is who they really need a lot from. Who we're on right now at Chatsworth. Luke Parker, who has been really good for Pinnacle this year. Getting playing time mostly at the end of last year, and especially in the playoffs, and he's taking it and run with it as well. Always at 100% is what Coach Chris Hilling says. Pinnacle trying for the centering pass. Taken away by Ewart. Shackert takes a hit. Got it in deep. Cerneca taken away by Derry Berry. Cerneca at the side of the net looking for the wraparound try. Still loose and Parker will poke it to the corner. Fox gives it right back to Parker who's over the line. Minthorn with him taken away by the Coyotes. Kept in at the line by Butler. He gets taken down on the play. The puck almost hit the official at the bench, and Costadina will hold it in his own end. Shots in favor of the Pioneer, 7-2. to two. 
And up 1-0 as this one hits the net. Off the stick of Minthorn. Mentioned the league has a lot of parity this year. Any team can really win it. We saw DV last year and got a good game coming up as well. Brophy, yes, a very big wild card Brophy, team. Brophy's a sleeper. They haven't been performing very well in the last few years. Like last year, they got taken down by DV in the play in. So I'll be interested to see how they do. I've seen you done your homework. I have. <laughs> I have done my homework. DV with a big game. That was a 5 1 final in that one. Campo takes it away and will come the other way. Costadina over to Stockford. Off the stick of Butler and to Brown. Cal Butler's only played 14 games this year for Pinnacle, but he's had a great year. 22 points, 6 goals, 16 assists. Only Alex Hilling and Nicole Iacono has more goals than him. Here comes Sam Minthorn over the line, looking to backhand it in front. Taken away by Carter Williams for Campo. Kept in by Illing. Backhand try, kept in by Glantz at the neutral, or else it would have been an odd man rush for Campo the other way. A big night for the first line of Pinnacle last night against Horizon. Five goals, and all of them came from that first unit. Watterson takes it away, looking for Ewart. Given up, Illing comes the other way with his speed. Pass Ewart, Illing to the net, save. Still loose in front and cleared out of harm's way. Kept in at the blue, that was Schmall. And Anderson will have time just to clear it all the way down into the glove of Shardle. Is that a strike or a ball, Matt? Uh, that might be a ball. Just, a little, <laughs> just time it outside. O'Mahony in front of the Campo bench. Gets knocked down. Schleiding is in, own, is in his own end. Tries to go to the near side for Hammond. Keeps it in. Glove down by Stockford at the blue line. Knocked down by Rydell. Iacono behind the net. We'll go to O'Mahony for Hammond in the slot. Backhand try got blocked down. Campo just backhands it out. Off the stick of Rydell. Comes Lynch. Forgets the puck looking to hit Schmall on the way. Gives it up and Stockford will start it back in his own end. Campo doing a good job of keeping the puck away from their netminder when they can. Only allowed seven shots so far. Lynch for Campo across the red line into the offensive zone. Watched by Stockford. Lynch takes it away from Stockford with a stick lift. Iacono cancels him out. Campo's forecheck going to work. Brown looking to backhand it forward. Turned it over to Iacono. And Pinnacle will start it up. Iacono and Hammond, a two-on-two -two rush. Iacono to the goal line. Pass in front, still loose and cleared out by the Coyotes. Derry Berry has to wait for Hammond to touch up, and he does. He'll take the outside track into the offensive zone. To the circle, he'll turn with it back to Gavin Williams. Thought about it, now goes down to the goal line. Weissman in front looking for Fagus, and he fanned on it. Campo the other way. Three back for the Pioneers. Watterson. Stopped at the half wall, loose puck. Williams backhand try save, rebound. They got another save, save by Shardle. Oh, he got his glove in the way on the rebound try. Here comes Khan for Pinnacle, a two on one with Fagus. Couldn't get the puck over to him. Austin Shardle, his first big test of the night, and he's passed with two big saves in front. 3 10 to go in the first. Khan couldn't get his stick on it. Matt, take me through that save. Uh, Shardle has been seeing a lot of, hasn't seen a lot, hasn't seen a lot, a lot this game. So hit it to the other side of the glove. Great rebound control by Austin. I think that's going to be the key for Austin, controlling his rebounds tonight. It's hard to stay sharp when you're not seeing a lot of action as well, right? No. Caputo looking to put more action in on Shardle. Gets over to Heinrichs. Kept in by Anderson on the backhand. Heinrichs lost it. Fox will backhand it out, and Campo starts it up once more. Smith to the net. Blocker saved by Shardle with the corner. Heinrichs on the rebound. Threw it to the side of the net. It hit the side. Shotsworth can't get it out. Kept in by the Coyotes. Past few shifts. They've done a good job of establishing some offensive zone time. A good clear by the Pioneers. Ewart off the wall. 
Fox can't keep, keep it in as the arm comes up from the official. Coyotes get it out, Costadina in his own zone. He's played a little bit of forward for Pinnacle, but now he's moved back on D. They mentioned O'Mahony from D to forward. Parker at the goal line. Got it in front, still loose in the blue crease, and clear it out. Caputo for Campo, taken off the puck by Luke Parker, who then takes a hit from Heinrichs. No arms up from the officials. We stay with no penalties so far, and a good clean hit by Heinrichs at center ice. Butler looking to lay the wood. Got pass sliding, Jewett back for Campo. The long hair coming out of the helmet. Pass in front, looking for Illing, who is coming right off the bench. It comes all the way back to Shardle, 135 to go in period number one. Ian Schmall for Stockford, who lost it. It bounces to Cal Butler in this first line for Pinnacle as one more try added in the period. Butler across the line at the circle, goes to the backhand, and he put it high, the crossbar. Rebound by Minthorn, and Seligman got his post and positioned himself well for it to hit off his pad. Great job by Minthorn by getting there early and tracking that shot off the glass. A funny story about Minthorn is that Coach Chris Illing said, if you want to play in this top line, you got to play some defense as well. We know his offense and how great he is on the offensive side, but he's really taken a step defensively this year as well. Butler at the goal line, couldn't get it in front, still loose, it pops up in the air. On the other side now, still Butler with it. Campo just looking to clear it out. 45 seconds to go in period number one. Stockford turned it over. Shocker got it up and a big hit by Stockford. He laid out Cerneca. 35 seconds. Alex Illing with the only marker of the first period and here he is once more. He gets it up to Cole Iacono. Illing goes for a change. 25 seconds on the clock. Campo, one more try. Here comes Parker Rydell taking on two pinnacle pioneers, and he gets laid out by Derryberry. Rydell gets right back up and applies the pressure. He lays a hit in the process as well. Putting down Gavin Williams with 10 seconds to go. Bodies going flying in the far side half wall. Down low is Lynch with five. Pinnacle can't clear it out. One more try, trying to get to the net, but the buzzer is going to sound. End of the first period, Pinnacle up 1-0. Goal by Alex Illing that was unassisted. And the period ends with the Pioneers not only leading on the scoreboard, but also leading in shots on goal 9-5. What did you think of that frame? Uh, I think Pinnacle did a great job of playing physicality. Coming off the bat, strong, physical. If they keep it up, it'll be fine. But I'm sure Campo's going to come back in the next few periods and fire away. Campo had a few shifts in that period as well where they really had the momentum and they had a few forecheck opportunities. It's all about getting the puck to the slot. Yes, agreed. They can get into the slot and get shots on Shardo. They should have no problem. Put no one in the back of the net. Too. So a quick break between the second period begins. Our next game, which is at 8 o'clock right after this one, just a different link on the YouTube, will be Trophy and Horizon. That's the 6 and 11 matchup between the Broncos and the Huskies of Horizon, who Pinnacle saw last night a 5-4 win for Pinnacle, and Horizon really took him to the end. It was a 4-4 game with four minutes to go, and it always seems like classic when Horizon and Pinnacle plays, right? Yeah. So second period has begun. Both teams will switch sides. Now the period of the long change as Charlotte gets credit for five saves in that first period, and Seligman gets credit for eight of nine. Both top goaltenders, and you know how great goaltending and defense really means in the postseason. It does. It means a lot. If your goalie can stay locked in all throughout the playoffs, it'll be really good for the team and really help the team. Which is probably the most interesting part of Desert Vista's run last year. They had two goalies, and they rotated them back and forth. Somehow they stayed locked in. They have two two goalies this year as well, and Jonah yeah, Bankel and Dylan Hansen. Both of their goalies solid last year. I mean, I bet you it was really hard for them to decide who was to play the championship game last year. That's what Coach Anderson said for last year. It was really just picking a name out of a hat. He's also Tamburo didn't start. I think he may have started one of the either none or one of the game, and then came in kind of cold in the championship. We were surprised to see that. Mm -hmm. Tamburo started the quarterfinals against Shop, but he didn't start the semifinals against Pinnacle. Minthorn's offside as the second period begins. Healing on the four check. Took it away. It went off the skate of Butler. He gets it right back. Cal Butler, back door, looking for Illing. The pass went behind him. He gets the puck off the boards. 
Costadina gave it away to Watterson. I mentioned Watterson against Pinnacle. He's had a really good career against them, especially these two games they played in the regular season. A goal and an assist for him and Aiden Lynch with two goals in two games against these Pioneers. Two names to watch out for on the Campo side. Chatsworth gets it ahead past Williams. Ewart's back for Campo. Pinnacle in the middle of a change. The Coyotes will flip it down. Off Costadina's glove and off Chatsworth's glove. A lot of big D back on Campo as well. Being a good job of keeping the puck out of high danger areas. They get it over the line. On the backhand, Brown takes a spill. No arms up. As it's cleared down to Jewett. 130 gone in this second period. Illing with the only goal of the game so far. That happened only 90 seconds into the first period. This one will be an icing as Pinnacle ices it down. And Campo will get an offensive zone draw. It's been an interesting year for Campo with their record that really doesn't tell the whole story. They've lost five of their last six coming in, but they played well against the Pioneers. Has there ever been a time where maybe you play really well against a team that's better than you or yeah, vice versa? When I think of that, I think of sophomore year, it was Pinnacle, or Pinnacle was always a team to beat, and they have always has been. So whenever you go into Pinnacle, you feel like you always gotta give your best, and when you do, it feels really good. Even in a down year, there's still that brand name in Asha, especially in Division I. Fox spins and tried to throw it across. Gavin Williams comes down from the blue to pick it up. He'll take it around the net. Williams back, Derryberry, big slap shot, save, rebound try at the side of the net was Parker. Still loose, Chatsworth's shot gets deflected up and out of play. Rebound tries by Penico right there. And that's that second line they really need to get going, right? You have Chatsworth who came up from D2 last year. And then Fox and Parker have both been at D1 the entire year. And just trying to get a little bit more of the second line, because as you know, you need all lines firing in the playoffs. Especially in the playoffs, yes. It takes all the team to help you win. Fox will take the draw in the circle for the Pioneers. Chatsworth was looking to dig it out of the scrum. He does successfully. Back to Derryberry, who stands at the top, tries the slap shot again, and it goes wide. Might have got deflected on the way. Slegman saw it a little bit late as he was lifting his right shoulder. 2.30 into the second. This second line for Pinnacle applying a lot of pressure on the Coyotes. Williams shot into the glove of Seligman, who stands at the top of his crease. Pinnacle's doing a great job of keeping traffic in front of the net, not letting Dom see it a lot. It was an interesting situation for him last year, too. He only got to start half the games with Tremo Sharafa over at Chap, and now it's kind of his net, and he started the majority of games for Campo, and he's there at number one. Not a bad number one to have, I'd no, say. not at all. Taken off the stick of Hammond. Iacono lays a hit and takes the puck away, keeps it on side as well. Backhanding it out was Justin Caputo. Stockford will circle in his own end. Pinnacle up just one. Campo keeping the game low scoring as they like to. O'Mahony now placing the four check in the corner. Schleiding in Caputo trying to backhand it out. Rydell looking to just force it past that blue line and Pinnacle's not letting up easy. Here comes Campo the other way. Lynch picks up the puck past Small on the backhand. Lynch with two goals against Pinnacle this season already. Throws it back door looking for Schleiding. Off the bench is Kraft. He tries the other way. Hammond takes it away for the Pioneers. Stockford will go from near side to far. A lot of good pressure applied by the Coyotes. Not allowing Pinnacle to exit the zone easily. Icing's going to get waved off here as it went past Ewart's stick. Anderson back for Campo, and he's going to ice this one. It won't reach the goal line quick enough, however, as Icing's waved off. Kraft can't keep it in, and this one will be icing. Four minutes gone in the second, still 1-0, and the second period has been much better for Campo. They're not allowing a lot of chances in front, and they're really allowing Seligman to see the puck well. Yeah, they are. It's a lot of neutral zone play, keeping it even between the two players in their zone. Cerneca in the circle for Campo. He gets it over to Shackert. All the way back to Warden. Anderson does a good job of keeping it in. 
Ostadina back for Pinnacle. Caught up in the skates of the official. Vegas couldn't take it away. Warden kept it in front and put the soft shot in on Chardle. I don't even know if does he get a, does he get credit for that in terms you know, of a save? I'm not sure. I've always <laughs> wondered that. If it goes in, it's a shot, right? I guess so. Vegas at the blue. His soft shot in on Sligman, who makes the pad save. Warden will go all the way around. Warden, one of few on this Campo team that have played all 20 games, and that's what you really want to see. Playing all 20 games. As taken down, we're going to have our first penalty. Sir Neko was taken down, tripping the call, and Pinnacle is the one who goes to the box first. Our first penalty of the game, it's Jackson Vegas to the box for tripping, and a big opportunity for the Campo Verde Coyotes here. If I were Campo, I'd take as much. This opportunity, I'd take it. Take, I wouldn't take for granted, sure. Now the Campo power play has been struggling as of late. They're 0 for its last eight, going back a couple games ago against Brophy, but the one is all it takes. They start with Brown, Williams, Watterson, Anderson, and Caputo, their captain. Pinnacle gets the immediate clear. Anderson will chase it back. Minthorn right on his heels. Anderson spins out. Minthorn takes it away. Pinnacle's going to look to kill time here with Derryberry. Puts it over to Williams, who will high flip it all the way down. Vegas in the box, two minutes for tripping. Campo looking to start their power play off on a good note. Getting it up to Anderson. A little bit of a slingshot play as Anderson's going to come and touch up. Brown makes it over the line. The Coyotes will look to set it up now. Derry Berry pins him in the corner. Here's Watterson behind the net. Watterson in front, shot saved by Chardo. Oh, it's in. Oh, it snuck past Chardo. And the goal scored by Brandon Brown. A power play goal. Campo has tied it up here in the second. Campo did a great job of taking advantage of that power play. Should put him right back in this game. A shot that was initially stopped by Chardo, or so it looked like. And then it just snuck in. Looks like it struck sucked in on the left side, glove side it looks like. They give Brown the goal with the assist given to Andrew Watterson. And we have a tie game at one to one. A power play goal by Campbell. Forget 0 for 8. Make that one for one. Ewart to the side of the net. Taken away by the Pioneers. Stockford. Ahead for Butler, getting that first line on. Butler, shot save, rebound for Illing, and Seligman dives on top of it. Great cover by Seligman, way to take Monkey out of the question. For our viewers that don't know, Monkey is the nickname of Alex Illing. <laughs> don't worry, I got confused on that first. I've played with Mon Monkey for a long time, ever since those Triple H Junior Coyotes days. I don't know if anyone calls him anymore. I don't know if anyone oh, calls they do. him that. They do? Yeah. The Illings do, 100%. And he's been a great player for Pinnacle this year in all assets. Nine minutes to go in the second. Heinrichs takes it away for Campo. Is right back in this game. It took one penalty. The only penalty we've had so far was Jackson Vegas to the box for tripping. And Campo takes advantage. Now Heinrichs in deep with Schmall who tries the other side. Kept in by Smith. Turns it over to Stockford. He'll high flip it out. Stepping up was Brown. Couldn't catch it, and running into the boards was Campo. Stockford on the centering pass. Couldn't collect. It goes into the netting. That's the agility of Illing over there on the half wall, where he can really just stop on a dime and go the other way. He's an athlete, 100%, and always has been. I mean, you have one of those players on your team in Reed Gramlich, right? Yes, Reed Gramlich. Can change directions on a, on a snap. He's unbelievable. I don't know how he does it. Talk about his goal last night, the third goal. I'm not even sure how that went in. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> went yeah. over the shoulder of Jonah Bankel. No, you know what surprised me last night was Landon Woods' snipe. Yeah. That was a good goal. Unfortunately, it was called off, but I was surprised to see him get some action last night. Could have been five goals in that second period for Notre Dame. Wood, with about 20 seconds to go in the second period, scored. Got called back for unsportsmanlike conduct. Caught up at the half wall. Ewart looking to keep in along with Brown. Pinnacle will skate it out. Chatsworth to Fox. Charlie Fox, his shot, got blocked down off a stick. Now Chatsworth in the corner. Eight minutes to go in the second. Parker behind the net. All the way back. 
Costadina gives it right back to Luke Parker. On his backhand centering pass, Chatsworth couldn't collect in his skates. And Campo will skate it out. Here's Watterson. You mentioned two points in two games against Pinnacle. Now another here in his third game. He gets the assist on the Brandon Brown power play goal. Chatsworth from long distance. Blocker saved by Seligman. And Watterson will skate it out. Been one of the top players for this team. 12 games, 6 points for Andrew Watterson this year. And now make it 3 points against Pinnacle. O'Mahoney shot saved by Seligman. He almost bounced in after it went off his blocker. He tried to hold it. It went between his arm and his hip. Almost skipped in on that far post. Seven minutes in the second to go. Costadina puts it around. Seligman out of his net to play it. Hammond thought he got there first. Schleiding back hands it out. Looking for Anderson, and he does. The big body of Anderson takes a lot of positioning and creates space for himself. There he goes one more time. Stopping the clearing attempt by Iacono. Picked up at neutral by Lynch. Lynch into the zone for Campo. Hammond coming back on the back check. 1-1 one, one we stand here in the second. Hammond couldn't get it in deep. Looking for Lynch. It found the sick of Derryberry in front of his own bench. Takes a hit and backhands it in. Behind the goal line is Rydell. A Campo team that's playing the game they exactly want to play. A defensive neutral zone type game. Allows Seligman to see the puck and keep it low scoring. Williams all the way across. Derry Berry, shot save, rebound try, still loose in the crease. Poking at it, Seligman's on his stomach. And now coming around the net is Iacono looking for O'Mahoney. Six are flying, Campo clears it all the way down. Icing's the call, but what a great defensive effort from the Coyotes there in front. You saw Anderson get in the net, almost like he was a goalie there. Great job by him. Seligman was on his side, as you're going to see it one more time. You had Anderson almost in the goal. Yeah. Looks like Dom got his glove down, or blocker down. It goes past the glove of Schmall. It'll be another icing against Campo with 5.40 to go. But the greatest equalizer, the goaltender. Yes, sir. And Seligman has made 16 saves to this part. Campo with six shots, but... The score is even, 1-1. Alex Illing with just 90 seconds into the first period, and then Brandon Brown. He had five goals this year. He now gets his first of the playoffs to tie us up at one. Dylan Weissman will take the draw for Pinnacle. Starting to shift there, lines up a little bit. Illing with Fagus and Weissman. Weissman and Fagus played on the same line at D2 last year, won the championship for Pinnacle along with Chatsworth, and now they get it Illing on their line, who turned it over. Kraft to Stockford, who will whip it in. Drew it back for Campo. They look to clear it out. Kept in by Stockford. For the moment, they put two on Stockford, and they backhand it out to neutral. Here comes Illing once more, just like his first goal, with speed into the zone. Illing to the circle, still skating. Shoot, and Great a glove save. save. He held the glove up, and Illing almost just placed it right in. Dom tracked that beautifully by Monkey. He cuts across the offensive zone with so much speed, got to the top of his blue paint, and really cut the angle off. A little bit of double shifting for Pinnacle when it comes to Illing. He now takes his place with Butler and Minthorn. Minthorn at the goal line, sharp angle shot, easy stick save for Seligman. Kept in by the Pioneers. Drop pass for Illing at the goal line. He'll take it around. Tried to turn with it. Now with the half wall surrounded by two Coyotes and taken away by Campo. Costadino with Glance for Pinnacle. And now Butler. Minthorn might have been a little early there. Offside, not called. Sadly, we don't have any review for the officials. Only for our replay system. That'd be great, though. I right? Think we did. I'll have to pitch that to the officials. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be happy with that. No, not at all. <laughs> Illing just slaps it in. 4.15 to go in the second. 
Minthorn behind, centering pass, still loose. It comes back to glance at the blue. His shot into the glove of Seligman, and he holds. Whenever you think Pinnacle is getting a little bit of momentum, the Campo defense is doing a good job of not only clearing the pump, but at times Seligman just covering it and getting the whistle. 4.09 to go in the second, still tied at one. A Pinnacle team that scored a lot this year. Maybe not as much as usual. Still 71 goals. Tied for a third in the league. They gave up 54. Campo scored 43. They gave up 88. The most surprising part might have been that we only have one penalty so far. These, were, these two teams are the third and fourth most penalized teams in D1. And only one penalty up to this point. Goes to show the importance of playoffs and how one penalty can really hurt you. So far, that's what's happened to Pinnacle. Here comes Luke Parker the other way. Anderson back on D for Campo. Tried the drop pass for Chatsworth. Chatsworth puts it in front. Blocked off a stick. The Coyotes will skate it out. Gavin Williams back for Pinnacle. The Derryberry and tipped in by Parker. Luke Parker has really come on as a forward for this Pinnacle team. And we know the top three, but he's not much far behind. Brown drops it for Watterson. They'll have to skate back into it, turns it over to Fox. Fox to the goal line. Will turn with it in front for Parker and a save by Seligman. Three oh four to go in the second. Pinnacle has gotten their chances, but their forecheck has been something that's been stymied by Pinnacle, by Campo so far. They had that long offensive zone shift early in that first period, but not a lot since. Been a lot of stop and go in the offensive zone, and all praise to Campo and how great their defense has been so far. A weird bounce off the boards goes in favor of the Pioneers. The Iacono's centering pass was blocked off a stick of Campo. Kept in by Schmall, gloved down by Lynch. Here comes Campo the other way. Lynch with sliding, cutting toward the net. Couldn't get the pass across. Good dive down by Stockford as he stopped a one-on-one -on -one with sliding. And now he starts up the offensive end. Stockford stops on a dime, tried the centering pass to the trailer. Gets it right back and puts it down low. 2.30 on the clock. Small shot, went wide. Rebound picked up by O'Mahoney, looking to put it in front to Iacono. Rydell goes off the glass, kept in by the shin pads of Small. Gets it down low. Now the four check gets going for Pinnacle. O'Mahoney and Caputo do battle in the corner. Hammond picks up the loose puck, will turn with it. Got the puck taken away from him by Lynch. Lynch. Couldn't beat Schmall to the puck, who gets it to Hammond. To O'Mahoney at the end of a shift, still with it. Tried to drop it to Iacono. Under two minutes now. Iacono shoots, glove saved by Seligman. Loose puck on the rebound, kept in by Pinnacle. A lot of tired Kipo skaters in front. Vegas oh. scores! Right off the bench, Jackson Vegas. 2-1, Pinnacle. A long, extended offensive zone shift. He had a few Campo skaters out there for over a minute. And Fagus taps home great, the centering pass. Great centering pass by Pinnacle into the slot. Finds his man and tucks it between the legs of Dom. Two goals for Pinnacle, and two of them have gone to the five hole of Seligman. 1.42 to go in the second. Fagus gets the goal. The assists go to Glance and Iacono. Ethan Glantz just one point in the regular season, and, well, he's a playoff player. He gets a point now in the playoffs. Campo looking to come right back. Shot, rebound try, and Fagus is right there. Still loose. Coyotes at the side of the net. Backhand try, big save. Big save. Rebound try. Oh, oh, it went through the a... crease and wide. Captain Ewart shot. It's oh. in. Ewart tie game. A lot of commotion. Just 25 seconds after Pinnacle scores to take the lead, it's Ewart to tie us up at two. 
What a perfect shot that was. Yeah, it was. So Ewart ties us up. The assist go to Ryan Caputo and Aiden Smith. That puck was dancing in the blue crease. It came back to the blue line. And Ewart put the perfect shot in. High glove on Chardle. We stand 2-2 with 1.05 to go in the second. Anderson taken down by Illing. Campo backhands it out. Can tell the tension and the momentum. You talk about pressure. I don't think Campo has a lot of pressure. Not at all. And they're playing like it. Derry Berry over the line. Derry Berry trying to get to the net. Knocked down. Still a try. Still loose in the crease. Derry Berry turns and a save play. by Seligman. Don just did a really good job of controlling his rebounds. Williams back for Pinnacle. 33 seconds to go in the second. Ealing over the line to Butler. Butler's try, saved by Seligman, rebound and he covers. Dom has been doing a great job of swallowing pucks and covering them. It'll be really good for Campo in the long run if he keeps doing that. And, and why is that good for Campo? It stops extended shifts, right? A lot right? of whistles, a lot of whistles. Whistles are always a friend for goalies. I'd take way more face-offs and whistles than the puck just keep going. You get changes, a, yeah, right? Yeah, it takes a lot off the forwards and defense. 21 saves so far for Seligman. One more try for the Pioneers in the offensive zone. Campo has come right back every time Pinnacle has put it into the back of the net. 25 seconds between the goal by Fagus and then Ewart. This try goes wide and Shortle will cover. It's been odd because Campo hasn't had a lot of time in the offensive zone, but when they do, they really turn it up and they've yeah. had good extended shifts and they're rewarded for it with two goals. So 10 seconds on the clock, Brown will take the draw for Campo. Butler for the Pioneers. Butler wins it back, Derry Barry got it forward. With seven seconds it's Illing, Illing over the line with Minthorn, got it across and the pass is in his skates. One second and there's the buzzer. Oh, it was a two on O it looked like with Illing and Minthorn. The pass across was in his skates. And that's where we stand after two. Two to the score. So a quick break between the periods. 23 to 10, Pinnacle leads in shots. But where it matters, 2-2 two -two on the scoreboard after two periods. David York with the goal for Campo. And Jackson Figgis with the goal for Pinnacle in a three goal second period. Brandon Brown got the power play goal for Campo. Matt, you know the standards of Pinnacle, you know their expectations at that as well. You gotta think all the pressure is right there on that bench. Yeah, it's right there. 2-2 two, two after two, not the type of game really anybody expected except maybe Campo fans, and they've been very resilient to Coyote now. So 15 minutes to decide it. If it's tied after three, we'll go right to a shootout in the play-in games. A five-round shootout, no overtime. In the play-in games, now in the quarters and the semis and the championship, that's different. We'll play five-on-five five sudden death overtime, but for the play-in games, it's a five-round shootout. Kind of like it. I like the shootout more than overtime. You you get more, to as a goalie, yeah. you get more <laughs> chances. You know, it's not just one and done. I kind of like it better. How about this? Do you like the five on five or the three on three? Five on five. Yeah. For my for the own defensive sake. Fox will take the draw for Pinnacle. Two two game going into the third. Here for our first playing game at Ice Den in Scottsdale. Parker over the line for Pinnacle. A team in the Pioneers that's been held to such a high standard. They've gotten such great results over the past few years. Championships on championships. Last year, they flamed out in the semis, losing to DV. 6-3, to three, that score was. And now on the brink against Campo here in the play-in game. Fox will take the draw for the Pioneers. Tries to win it back, gets caught up, and now Campo will come the other way. Watterson across the line, taken off the puck by Stockford. Schmall to Chatsworth over the red. Chatsworth couldn't get it toward the net. 
I'll tell you, Campos doing a great job at blocking Comes shots. in front, Fox's shot, and another save by Seligman. Yeah, Campos doing a great job at blocking shots early, especially from those blue line shots by Pinnacle. They're doing a great job at swallowing those, making sure Dylan can see, really preserving his energy, but more so just making him, give him more confidence in front of him. He covers up another shot by Chatsworth. And Pinnacle lets that first line out one, once more. Of Butler, Illing, and Minthorn with Derryberry and Williams on the back. Caught up in the slot. The Coyotes will skate it out. Here's Heinrichs. Heinrichs to Smith over the line. Tries to make a move past Derryberry. Smith. Pinned to the boards by Derryberry. Picked up by Williams. Loose puck still. Heinrichs is on it. Couldn't get through Butler. Cal Butler from his own zone into the Campo zone. Tried to drop it back. Anderson took it away. Couldn't use his stick in the process. He was just trying to kick it forward. Justin Caputo back for Campo. He'll try the near side. Anderson leaves it for Heinrichs. He's going to skate it out. Blocked down by Minthorn. The center doing his work to Illing. Circle, shoots, blocker saved by Seligman. He puts it into the corner where Butler picks it up. Costadina for Butler in the circle. Walks in, his shot was blocked. He gets on his rebound. Butler has Illing on the far side, couldn't get it to him. Glance to Costadina, down for Illing. A long shift for these Campo skaters. Illing all the way across for Glance. Walks in, shoots, blocker save, along with the pad by Seligman, and a clear down by Campo right in on Chartle. They'll get a full change. Two minutes in, picked off by Anderson on the long pass from Chartle. Anderson walks in, tried to put it in front. He does, backhand try, couldn't get it away. That was Schleiding. Chartle's got to be careful on those, especially in the playoffs. You never know what could happen with throwing the puck down yourself, but... It got picked off by Anderson. Pinnacle with a good defense to keep it out of their own net. Campo takes it away. Sliding over the red. Still with it, he'll take it to the corner. Two and a half gone in the third. Hammond uses the boards, takes a hit in the process. Here's the goal scorer, Ewart. Turns it over to O'Mahony, looking to go cross ice for Iacono. Bounce over his stick. Rydell takes Iacono to the boards and we get a whistle, we're going to get a penalty. A high stick is the call. Let's see who they get, and it's going to go against the Coyotes. It's going to go against Parker Rydell, and the first penalty against the Coyotes today. I'm sure that was talked about in the locker room before to not take any penalties. The first one, Rydell to the box for high sticking. Like you said earlier, taking penalties in the playoffs is not good. Gives the other team a good power play chance. You've got to limit those in the playoffs. So... Pinnacle to the power play. They have 16 power play goals, tied for second most with Matt, your Notre Dame prep. As Campo will clear it all the way down right off the jump. The five-man unit for Pinnacle they go with is O'Mahony at the top. Remember, he started this year back on defense. He mans it up at the top on the blue line with Alex Illing, George Hammond, Sam Minthorn, and Cal Butler. Hammond at the red, gets it over. Walks in at the circle, his shot was blocked, taken away by the Coyotes, and it goes off the netting, so the faceoff will stay in the Campo defensive end after it went off the stick of Brown. Another great eat by Campo. You can tell it's a point of emphasis to really get in those shot lanes. Yeah. They're putting their body on the line, and why wouldn't you? It's the playoffs. Butler couldn't win this draw. Jewett will try the boards, kept in by O'Mahony. Now Pinnacle can set it up. Illing to his right, back to O'Mahony, walks in, waits, his shot going back door, was blocked down. Kept in by Illing, 120 on the penalty against Rydell. Hammond back to the blue, off the sick of Illing, and Campo forces them back to neutral. 11.20 on the clock, a 2-2 game. Pinnacles had the lead twice, Campo has come back to tie it two times. Minthorn over the line. Trying to do it all by himself. Taken away and cleared down by Campo. Butler will start it from his own end. 40 se 45 seconds to go in the penalty. 
Butler lost it. Hammond was there to pick it up. George Hammond at the goal line. Centering pass at back door. Oh, it didn't go through. Either Seligman got a piece of it or Butler missed the net. And it's clear down. Great opportunity by Butler. Sometimes you got to capitalize those, especially in the playoffs, though. A chance in front, and Butler couldn't put it home. 20 seconds to go in the power play for Pinnacle. Iacono over the blue line. Drops it for Derry Berry. All the way back for Stockford. It gets to him. The second unit now on for Pinnacle. They get it back to Stockford at the top. His shot saved. Rebound, they score! Power play goal for the Pioneers, and they take a 3-2 lead. Just about five minutes into the third period, it's Cole Iacono along with the help of Alex Kahn. Kahn gets the marker, Pinnacle up 3-2. Great job by the rebound. You have to capitalize those, especially in the playoffs. Have to capitalize those. The initial shot from Stockford, they're going to give the assist to Iacono and Derryberry as Kahn was backdoor for the assists. And a defenseman moved to forward. He only had two goals in the regular season, and he gets probably the biggest goal for Pinnacle so far this year. Third time that Pinnacle has had the lead. Campo has come back each of the last two. Shocker gets it forward. That's a hand pass as he was trying to get it ahead to Cerneca. It's been resiliency, resiliency, resiliency for these Coyotes, and now they need to do it one more time. The faceoff will take place in neutral ice. Cerneco will be in the, in the dot against Fox. Jacker gets it forward. Kraft couldn't pick it up. Parker does battle, and he comes away with it. Luke Parker at the goal line, couldn't get it in front. Kept in by Costadina. Two penalties in this game, two power play goals. Chatsworth down low. Parker stops on a dime. He's knocked down in the process. He's on top of the puck, and that's why we get our whistle. No penalties, just the puck was under Parker, which will draw a faceoff. We mentioned penalties can really kill you in big games, and so far, both power plays are 100%. Maybe not the prettiest of ways, but they made it a toy in the back of the net. For both tries. Brandon Brown for Campo and Alex Kahn. That second unit for Pinnacle scoring their power play goal. Minthorn gets it back. Glance will put it around. Warden for Campo. Gets it ahead for sliding. Butler picks it up for Pinnacle. Across the line at the circle. Shot blocked down in front until Eggman covers. Now we mentioned how Flagstaff is moving on to Mullet next week. They beat Hamilton today 5-2. to two, And we have almost a final over in Chandler. Basha winning 7-2 to two over Schaap. That Basha team, we know how sneaky they are and how good they are, even though the record's only 8-8-4. Eight, eight and four. They have a very good team, and they will, barring a miracle, move on to Mullet. They win 7-2 to two when that game goes final. So the rest of the games we got are right here on our live stream. And now Bash has made it 8-2. Looking for Illing in front. It pops up in the air. Yeah, the end of this game, and then right after this game, on a different link, right on the same YouTube channel, it's going to be Brophy and Horizon in that 6 versus 11 matchup. It's going to be a really good one, just like this one is. Illing picks it up, going past two. Illing to the net, and he fanned on the shot. Didn't get all of it, and it went off the pad of Seligman. Campo clears it down. It won't have enough for icing as Stockford will chase up to it. Campo applying the pressure. Glove down by Caputo. Gets it down deep. Taken away by Costadina. He'll skate it out with the help of O'Mahoney. Two on one for Pinnacle. O'Mahoney with Hammond. He'll wait. He shoots save by Seligman. Rebound try. Knocked into the corner by Hammond. Hammond still with it. Gets past a few in front. Iacono couldn't put it home. Iacono turns with it. A lot of tired Campo skaters out there. A good four check. 
Pass to Stockford who shoots. Glove saved by Sullivan. Rebound try. It goes wide as Hammond turned and shot it. Going down was Yort. Kept in the zone by Pinnacle. Hammond on the backhand in front. Stick to side by Seligman. Back to Stockford who keeps the zone. His shot got blocked down. Aiden Smith looking to backhand it out. Still kept in by Pinnacle. A long, long shift for this line. Ayakono, O'Mahony, Hammond fanned on it. Hammond gets it back. Still loose into the corner. Ewart takes it away. Campo just needs to clear the puck, and they cannot. Stockford gloves it down. Ewart gets it right back. Can't clear it out. What a job by this line from Pinnacle. Iacono, Hammond, and O'Mahony. And keeping the zone as it goes past the glove of Seligman. High and wide. It's got to be a 90-second, maybe two-minute shift already. Now Schmall does his job to keep it in. And finally, Campo gets it out to neutral. Back to what you were saying about those shifts. I can't believe coaches will let him stay out this long for a playoff game, especially three to two. You gotta take these short shifts, fresh legs, every every chance you should get. Shots worth looking for Fox. Now Smith. Those three pinnacle skaters, those forwards, they didn't get a shift during the a change during the entire time and just playing the puck along the boards. Now Fox with some speed across the line. Fox at the goal line. Parker fell as he was going to the back door. 6.13 to go in the third period. Campo down 3-2. Watterson all the way across for Brown. Brown centering pass taken away by Fox. A good back check by Fox to stop at that opportunity. Parker lost the puck. Here's Brown once more. Williams lost his stick. Kept in by Campo for the moment. Oh no. Delayed offside is the call. It was very close at that blue line as Brown was looking to keep it in. Parker will pick it up. Looking to get it to Watterson. Pinnacle now 540 away from moving on. Campo one goal away from tying. As Williams will high flip it in. Shots in favor of Pinnacle, 34 to 11. Back in front, Minthorn scores! A turnover and Sam Minthorn gives Pinnacle a two goal lead. He goes high glove on Seligman and the top line center for the Pioneers with the A on his chest puts the Pioneers up 4-2 in the third. And that's going to be a huge deep breath for all the Pinnacle players. Butler gets the assist on the Minthorn goal. Pinnacle now leads 4-2. And Campo now not only needs one, they need two in the next 5-22. Yelling back in his own zone. And you have to think. Do you play conservative if you're, if you're Pinnacle? Do you kind of park the bus in a way? How do you play this here? You know, I'm not sure what they do. We'll see how they handle it. Caputo was back in front. Illing takes it away to Minthorn. Minthorn tried to get it to Illing. Kept in by Butler. And not a high stick at that. It was right at his waist. A good job of taking the puck out of midair legally. Costadina can't backhand out. Smith toward the net, and Shardle seems like possibly one of his first shots of the period does cover. Yeah, Shardle has got to stay awake. Not seen a lot. As a goalie, you, you got to find ways to stay in your game, especially with these low shots. Got to stay in somehow. Pinnacle is the five seed if they do move on, pending a win. They'll be heading to Mullet either Tuesday or Wednesday for the quarterfinals. Stockford puts it all the way around. Looking for Kahn, where he right now has the game-winning goal. Couldn't clear it out. Weissman couldn't get it in front. Black down off a stick. Here comes Campo the other way. They're going to need one, and they need one at least soon to give themselves a chance to tie it up. It went off a leg. Weissman for Pinnacle will hold in his own end. And it hasn't been all the top line. It all started with Jackson Fagus, who walks in. He shoots a glove save by Seligman. He had the goal to make it 2-1. to one. Pinnacle in the second. 
the top line has contributed two goals. It was Minthorn and Illing on those, but you have an Alex Kahn power play goal. And now a Jackson Vegas goal at that. You see that depth starting to show up. It pops up in midair, 3.45 to go. Cerneca. Can you establish a cycle? Down to Smith. Campo's going to have to put it toward the net. Anderson does. It goes wide off the boards. Rebound chance, and it got blocked down. Now with Cerneca at the side of the net on the far side. Ewart's shot goes high and wide. Kept in by Campo. We'll keep an eye on Seligman if they want to pull him. Lynch's shot goes wide to the short side. Rebound picked up by Cerneca. He gets taken down by Williams. And Ewart can't keep it in. Pinnacle finally gets a change. Campo looking to catch him in it. Anderson with speed into the zone. Takes it to the outside. Anderson centering pass. Lynch waits. He couldn't get the shot away. Still loose. Lynch still with it, and he put it wide. 2.45 to go. Campo keeps Seligman in net for now. Possibly their best run of keeping the puck in the offensive zone, and it continues. Here's Lynch for Campo looking to cut toward the net. Big slap shot got blocked down. Anderson backhands a soft one toward the net and a whistle for Pinnacle with 2.30 to go. If I were Campo, I'd start to think about pulling Dom here. You don't have much time. Got to get something going. Slegman is skating toward the bench, waiting for the word from Coach French for Campo. They're going to take a timeout. So Campo takes their timeout. They'll have an offensive zone draw, most likely pull the goaltender at that. What's the strategy here? 2.30 to go, and you need two. You just got to get as many goals. I mean, it seems simple, but it's what it is. For Pinnacle, they get two from their top line. They get two from those second and third lines with Vegas and Khan applying the pressure. And, well, if anyone will know their opponent, Pinnacle will. They'll be playing the four seed in Desert Vista, pending if they do win. And that'll set up for another great playoff matchup between those two teams. On senior night for Pinnacle, there's... Eight seniors will be moving on, pending a miracle, to play at Mullet Arena, a place that they didn't get to play. Only Notre Dame and DV did last year, and now thankfully, and praise on Asha, praise on the powers that be, that now eight teams get to play at Mullet Arena, the home of the Coyotes, the home of the ASU Division I Sun Devils. I mean, Matt, you know of it. How awesome was it to play in that place? Once in a lifetime opportunity, as what I would have said, but I mean, going now back, twice. Yeah, now <laughs> twice. So we'll see how it is. I just realized last night. Last night may have been my last game at the Ice Den. Yeah. So it was a little, a little sad, but I mean, getting to play at Mullet is really cool, especially last year's circumstances with 3,000 plus in the stands. I mean, it's definitely nerve-wracking, of course, but it was a lot of fun. Stockford will hold hold in his own end. It'll be Tuesday and Wednesday, not this week, but the week after are going to be the quarterfinal matchups with the semis on Thursday and then the championship on Sunday at 5 o'clock. Make sure to go buy your tickets, asha.org, and on Ticketmaster, where you can go buy your $15 tickets to the championship. And if it was anything like last year, it's going to be a lot of fun and really entertaining. We have a lot of great teams this year, really more than those top four. And if you want to, if you have the powers that be, if you have two screens, make sure to scan that QR code. It'll take you right to the tickets. We're upgrading our technology this year. 2.04 to go. Pentacle holds on to it. Parker looking to get it in deep. Campo needs to get it in the offensive end and then try to start it up and get Seligman out of net. Brown will take it over the line. Seligman's at the top of his crease. Back in front, Watterson. Anderson couldn't put it home. Seligman still in his crease. No call up yet. Anderson at the circle. His shot glove save by Shardle. And you have to think if any time, then now has right to now, be the yeah, time to exactly. pull the goalie. A minute 40, you have to get something going. And as they continue on their power play, six on five, you think they have no problem trying to score, but looks like they're going to keep Domin for now. Caputo will take the draw with Smith right behind him. 
Smith trying to pick it up off the draw, centering pass, still loose in the crease, and it went wide. Williams for Chatsworth. Fox couldn't pick it up. He gets knocked down. Heinrichs for Campo. Seligman so still stays in his net. Campo must think that they need to get it to one to pull him. Caputo can't hold on to it. Pinnacle will clear it out. A lot of snow right by that Pinnacle bench, and that's what happens when you play a playoff game with no ice cuts between the periods. Yeah. I'll tell you, those ice cuts are nice. I'll leave it at that. Playing on a fresh sheet of ice every, every second or every period, it's really nice. You had that between every period over at Mullet, yes, right? Sir, now yeah. it's going to be a little different this year. You won't get that in the quarters or the semis. Uh, but you will get them in the championship. And to look at the rules, I believe you might get it after the second in the quarters and the semis, depending on time and everything. You know, Mullet Arena, Mullet Arena is a very popular place these yeah, days. And Pinnacle takes the timeout. You have the Coyotes over there. You have the Sun Devils as well. And you got Asha over there, too. <laughs> yeah, you do. Now, remember, it's not it's not this week. You're gonna, each team is going to have a nine- or ten-day break between games. They played yesterday or they played today in the playing game. So a lot of time to practice, a lot of time to you know, study your opponent and get ready for your quarterfinal matchup. Vindable takes the timeout, 109 to go, 4-2, the Pioneers in front. How do you think that nine-day break is going to impact each team? Uh, depends on how you look at it. Sometimes it can be bad for the field, but a lot of momentum going into the last half of the games, it could be it could be bad because you don't want to take that momentum away. For some, I feel like it's good to re, re look at who you have and you know work on things for that team. Everybody get healthy. Everybody get to 100% as well. Campo in their own end. Now a minute to go. They need two. All the way across, off the skate of Waterson. Looking for Costadina. He'll put it all the way around. Worden at the logo. Williams puts it wide of the net. Glance for Pinnacle. A 12-5 matchup that was much better than maybe anybody ever expected. And resiliency is the word you can mention when talking about this Campo team. Coming back twice against Pinnacle. Looking for it one more time. Pass in front, still loose. Poking at it, backhand try, and it's in! Oh, Campo gets one to go, 22 seconds left. And the Coyotes have made it a game. Only down one now. The goal goes to Carter Williams. And we're back to a one goal game. You gotta think Seligman's gonna head to the bench. And the face off will take place at center ice. I am in shock that they have not pulled Dom yet. But I guess it works out. But we'll see if he goes. Waterson gets the assist. On the goal, 4-3, 22.9 to go in the third. Brown pushes on the draw, looking for Williams. Sligman walks out, now they're going to pull him. 17 seconds now, Williams in the corner. Gavin, that is, now at 13, looking to pin it to the boards. Campo centering pass, now loose at the side of the net. Eight seconds, Derryberry takes it to the boards, looking to pin it. Campo looks to take it out. Derryberry's on top of the puck, side of the net, still loose with one, and Pinnacle survives. The Pioneers make it through the play-in game. They win 4-3 just at the end. A one-goal game. And like we said, one of the better 5-12 games you're going to see. Campo gave it all they can give. They continue to fight back, and you got to give them a lot of praise for their effort. Yeah, it's a great game by Campo on both sides, really. Pinnacle scores four. Campo scores three. The Coyote season is over. Pinnacle moves on to the quarterfinals at Mullet Arena, not this Tuesday or Wednesday, next Tuesday or Wednesday in the quarterfinals. The Pioneers, the five seed, they move on. They'll be playing against the four seed Desert Vista in that game. Campo goes home. A season that didn't go their way in the regular season, but there's nothing to be ashamed of with their effort tonight. No, not at all. Seligman with a great night in net. 32 saves for him on four goals allowed. Shortle had a good night as well, 17 saves on 20 shots. Let's go over the goals really quick before we sign off. A quick ice cut and then Brophy and Horizon should start around 8-10 or so. Different link on, on the same YouTube channel. Alex Illing got it started off. Brandon Brown for Campo tied it up. Jackson Vegas made it 2-1 and then 
Ewart 2-2 two two in that second period. Alex Kahn on the power play to give Pinnacle a 3-2 lead. Uh, Sam Minthorn made it 4-2. He gets the game-winning goal. And then in front was Carter Williams to make it 4-3, which was our final score. Matt, final thoughts, a 4-3 final. Pinnacle wins, they move on. Campo played a really good offensive game. There's nothing they should be ashamed of. And they even tried to come back at the end. Nothing Campo should be ashamed of offensively. Sligman with the great game, Shardell at that. Pinnacle moves on in the quarterfinals, and we'll wrap it up here. Next game, different link, Brophy and Horizon, the sixth seed takes on the 11 seed as the Broncos and the Huskies will go to work. Matt, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having Great me. Great for having you. Pleasure. We'll see you at Mullet in sure. just about a week and a half. And the final, 4-3, Pinnacle wins this one as the Pioneers move on.